Hi, I'm Major General Jerry Fenwick, Director, Office of the Joint Surgeon, National Guard Bureau. I'm here today with the Surgeon General of the Air National Guard and the Command Surgeon General of the Army National Guard to answer a few questions about COVID-19 and the COVID-19 vaccines. Drugs and vaccines have to be approved through the FDA. During public health emergencies, when there's a good scientific reason to believe that a product is generally safe and effective and that the benefits outweigh the potential risks, the FDA may authorize its use through an emergency use authorization, even while definitive studies are ongoing. No, the vaccine will be offered on a voluntary basis. Party populations should consider receiving the vaccine to protect themselves, family, and communities. Once formally licensed by the FDA, the DOD may consider making the vaccine mandatory for military personnel, as is the case for the influenza vaccine. Yes, for the time being, we will still need to wear appropriate face coverings and practice physical distancing in order to limit the spread of COVID-19 until the pandemic is substantially reduced. This reduction will occur much more quickly if people receive the vaccination. The CDC has relaxed restrictions for fully vaccinated individuals. However, service members are reminded to follow DOD guidance. The vaccine will be given in phases according to the DOD population schema. Five groups of people will be eligible for the vaccine administered at any DOD vaccination site. Those five are military personnel, all compos and all branches, federal civilians, federal contractors, authorized family members, and retirees. All of those categories are equally eligible based on their position in the DOD population schema. The two COVID-19 vaccines currently available in the United States do not contain eggs, preservatives, or latex. For a full list of ingredients, you should see each vaccine's fact sheet for recipients and caregivers. The mRNA vaccines include mRNA, lipids, salts and amines, and sugar. Not in an mRNA vaccine are animal products, antibiotics, blood products, DNA, egg proteins, fetal material, gluten, microchips, pork products, or preservatives like the Mercerol. It also does not include soy. Neither the Pfizer nor the Moderna vaccine is manufactured using aborted fetal tissue. The Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccine is produced using these aborted fetal cell lines. Most religious organizations have statements regarding receiving these vaccines. For example, the Catholic Church approves receipt of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines in all circumstances and approves the receipt of the Janssen vaccine if it's the only one available. Some people have experienced severe allergic reaction, also known as anaphylaxis, after getting a COVID-19 vaccine. As part of the 5 January 2021 report, these severe reactions occur at a rate of about 1.1 cases per 100,000 doses of vaccine, so they are very rare. The majority occur in people with a history of allergies or allergic reactions and begin within 30 minutes of the injection. Pregnancy is considered a risk factor for severe COVID disease, but studies in pregnancy and COVID vaccination haven't been completed yet. Based on this, many OB providers are recommending the vaccine for their pregnant patients. We recommend that women who are pregnant or planning to become pregnant talk with their OB provider to discuss their individual situation and to make an informed decision on whether to get vaccinated. Many people get the vaccine and do not experience side effects. This does not mean that their vaccine did not work for them. In the clinical trials, side effects occurred at varying rates. For example, only about one in 20 of every 100 people had a fever, but we do know that the vaccine worked for 95 out of every 100 people. The vaccine is not expected to have long-term negative effects. Most negative effects of any vaccine occur within six weeks, 
which is why the FDA asked the companies to provide eight weeks of safety data after the last dose. The vaccine breaks down pretty quickly because our immune cells respond to it and break it down. The CDC allows for a four-day grace period when assessing on-time receipt. Pfizer vaccines, 17 to 25 days after the first dose. Moderna vaccine, 24 to 32 days after the first dose. However, if your second dose is given later than this, you do not need to restart the vaccine. You still only need to get the second dose. The three authorized vaccines are not composed of live viruses, so there is no infectious virus to spread from a vaccinated person to someone else. Evidence is mounting that vaccination not only protects the recipient from the disease, but also protects them from becoming an asymptomatic carrier and infecting others. For the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, more than 90 of every 100 people during the clinical trials were completely protected from disease so that they are 94 to 95% effective. The Janssen vaccine was shown to be 85% effective in preventing severe disease. Viruses frequently change through mutation and new variants of a virus are expected to occur over time. One of the variants has been shown to be slightly less responsive to the vaccines, but fortunately is not the variant that is spreading the fastest. The vaccines are still considered effective, especially in preventing se severe symptoms. Getting vaccinated will decrease the development of new and potentially dangerous variants. The CDC's recommendations for slowing the spread are wearing masks, staying at least six feet apart from others, avoiding crowds, ventilating indoor spaces, and washing hands often. Those will also help prevent the spread of these variants. There is no evidence that the COVID-19 vaccines cause infertility in either men or women. The DOD has launched a program to distribute COVID-19 vaccines through a theory's series of phases. The first phase will be for individuals providing direct medical care, individuals maintaining essential installation functions, deploying or deployed forces, individuals age 16 and older at the highest risk for developing severe illness from COVID-19, adults age 65 and older, mission essential personnel, and frontline workers. All DOD vaccination sites will provide vaccine to five groups of people, military personnel, federal civilians, federal contractors, authorized family members, and retirees. All of these categories are equally eligible based on their position in the DOD schema. For now, the vaccine offered to you will depend upon what medical facility you receive your immunization at. All vaccines are considered safe and highly effective. No. You maintain your priority if you later decide to take the vaccine. If you initially decide not to take the vaccine, you can later change your mind and receive the vaccine. When a vaccine product becomes available under pre-licensure status, such as FDA emergency use authorization, recipients have the option to accept or refuse the EUA product. The DOD does not independently have the authority to mandate an EUA vaccine to service members. When formally licensed by the FDA, the COVID-19 vaccine may become mandatory for military personnel, as is the case for the influenza vaccine. To the greatest extent possible, beneficiaries in priority groups who are enrolled at MTFs should come to the MTF to be vaccinated. This will ensure the maximum number of vaccine opportunities allocated to jurisdictions other than the DOD are available for non-DOD population. No. At this time, individuals should try to receive both doses from the same manufacturer the vaccines are not considered interchangeable. The vaccine itself is offered at no cost, but there may be a cost based on your TRICARE plan for an office visit or if you require follow-up care. 
People should not get vaccinated if they're in quarantine after exposure or if they have COVID-19 symptoms. Please consult with your primary care provider on the best time to receive the vaccine. The demanding internal processes of shoring up the immune system and making antibodies is what causes most vaccine side effects, not the virus. It is still possible to get COVID-19 after receiving the vaccination or after having COVID-19. However, the vaccines have been proven to significantly reduce the risk of contracting the disease and also the risk of significant disease. Most cases of COVID-19 after vaccination occur within the first month before immunity has been achieved. The Pfizer vaccine is recommended for use in individuals age 16 and older, and the Moderna and Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccines are recommended for use in individuals age 18 and old, older. A person who is currently sick with COVID-19 should wait until their symptoms have cleared and complete isolation before receiving the vaccine. The CDC also recommends anyone treated with a COVID-19 antibody treatment, uh, for example, a monoclonal antibody, wait for at least 90 days from that treatment before getting the vaccine. If you have had a severe allergic reaction or an immediate allergic reaction to any ingredient in the mRNA vaccine, you should not get an mRNA COVID vaccine. Please consult with your primary care provider if you have any questions about your ability to take the COVID-19 vaccine or if you've had a prior serious allergic reaction. No. There is no COVID-19 test requirements to receive the vaccination, though you should not be experiencing any COVID-19 symptoms at the time you receive the vaccine. While it is possible to get COVID after getting the vaccine, it is much less likely. Those that develop an infection after vaccination are far less likely to have severe reactions to the disease, and getting vaccinated makes it harder for the disease to continue spreading and reduces its opportunity to mutate. No, neither of the first two COVID-19 vaccines contains the virus that causes COVID-19, and the most recent vaccine contains virus that is not capable of replicating. It does take a few weeks after vaccination for your body to build up antibodies to protect you from the virus. That means it's possible that you could be infected with the virus uh, that can, causes COVID-19 just before or just after getting the vaccine and still get sick. Yes, you should still be vaccinated because you can still become infected more than once. Although you may have some short-term natural protection after recovering from COVID-19, we don't know how long this protection will last. Vaccination is the best protection and it is safe. While we don't have specific studies on COVID vaccine and breastfeeding, in general, it's good to get vaccinated while breastfeeding because the immunity you develop will pass uh, to your baby through your milk, protecting your baby from COVID. Since we have no idea what the long-term effect of COVID is on babies, it's best for them to avoid catching it. No. COVID-19 mRNA vaccines do not change or interact with your DNA in any way. Messenger RNA vaccines, also called mRNA vaccines, are the first COVID-19 vaccines authorized for use in the United States. mRNA vaccines teach our cells how to make a protein that triggers an immune response. The mRNA from a COVID-19 vaccine never enters the nucleus of the cell, which is where your DNA is kept. This means the mRNA cannot affect or interact with our DNA in any way. The comparison is not COVID vaccine versus no COVID vaccine. It's COVID vaccine versus COVID disease. It's still much safer to get the vaccine than the disease. <laughs>